Hello, this is Peter Ward. Today I would like to talk a little bit about the graph theory tab in GPX Magic and introduce some of the theory behind it. Firstly, to say that when we talk about a graph in mathematics, we don't mean one of these things with lines on, we call those charts. Uh, this is what we mean. It is a graph made of nodes and edges. The green circles are the nodes. Nodes are where edges end and edges go between nodes. And there is nothing much more to it than that, other than to note that you can cross the edges in either direction. This is also a graph. This is a graph made out of a bike route. You can see that there are some interesting places where the route crosses itself and they are definitely nodes and the start and the end are also nodes. We can see that same route in Komoot route planning software. Other route planning software is available. See the start. Then there are some other waypoints which are not very interesting. You could construe these as being nodes with a trivial edge between them, but as I said, they're not very interesting. This node is interesting because there are four lines or edges entering or leaving that node. This node is interesting. We go around that loop and then we get to the end node. And that is also interesting because it's the end. Here is that route loaded into GPX magic. It may look a little bit different, but that's only because of the presentation. If we look at the lines, uh, we see the graph structure more clearly. The graph theory tab allows us to make that more explicit. So it has identified the interesting points on that graph where the route crosses, including also the start and the end as being interesting points. And it tells us here that our cycle route uses the nodes in the graph and the edges in this order by going along the center, around the ice out of that loop, and then up to the end. Now the uh, graph theory tab allows me to choose my own way around that route. So I might decide uh, not to go to the end at that point. Uh, so my last transition around the graph is indicated. I now could choose perhaps to go around that loop again and see what I'm doing there is just dropping the orange marker onto an edge or to an end point <coughs> so I can add <coughs> and excuse me now I got to the end uh, and then I could decide to come the other way down that edge and then all the way perhaps back to the start again and thus finish and when I've finished deciding which way I want to go, I don't need the graph anymore, so I can convert back to a normal set of roads. And oh, this is worth mentioning, oh dear, look, it's trimmed off the bit where I go out to the end and come back again. This is GPX magic normal behavior because it treats those waypoints as being erroneous. Uh, that's perhaps a little bit heavy handed, but hey ho, we can sort that out by going back into the graph mode and we probably want to do this anyway, which is to apply a offset, a lateral offset, so that we separate the use of an edge in one direction from the use of an edge in the reverse direction. And if I now convert that back to a graph, we get a better representation of our route because we are in the UK. So we ride on the left. So we are now moving up that road we go around the loop the first time, which was already in the route. We go around the loop the second time, which we've added. And then we go up to the end. It's added in a hairpin there and takes us back to the start. Uh, let's just see how that looks in a quick fly through. Perhaps we'll put the road surface back. Uh, you can see the separation of the lanes here, by the way. And you will also notice uh, that the roads coming out and coming back are of course exactly level and why shouldn't they be because they use the same track points i need to just move the cursor back to the beginning of the route for the fly through so here we go perfectly level fly through let me just go a little bit faster so we can see ourselves take the loop around the station entrance once we sort that bump out 
later. That's not the point of this video. And then we exit the loop, go up, execute the nice hairpin turn and zoom all the way back down to the start again. So we can make our crit route as complicated or as simple as we choose. We will, in the next video, look at how to improve the quality of the graphs that you start with. It's sometimes not that easy. Thank you.